Will you guys hold your hands with me and say this prayer after me? Dear God, thank you for summertime at baseball games. And your holy word, help us to receive it with joyful hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Noel wants to hear the radio again. All right. Well, I'm invest in that. <laughs> Thanks for coming up, everyone.
he played with them and gambled until God convicted him to read what was on those pages. Sammy learned that God had sent his son Jesus to take all of Sammy's sins to the cross with him, and that Sammy would be forgiven of all of them, and that God had, had given him eternal life. Sammy turned his heart over to the Lord. And when he was released, he opened and ran a ministry in his hometown. Well, as that all ran through my mind quickly, I was able to then say to that young man in Phoenixville, be my guest. You see, God's word does not return to the Lord. The concept of the Gideon ministry began in a hotel room in Boscobel, Wisconsin in 1898 when Samuel Hill and John Mickelson shared a room and discovered each other's Christian faith. They shared devotions and over a period of time determined to start a ministry for Christian travelers. Initially, the Gideons placed one Bible at the front desk of a hotel. And then in 1908, at the meeting of the Ministerial Association of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the Gideons shared their vision and calling to place a Bible in each hotel room, in each hotel. Wow. Well, at that meeting, a pastor made the motion that the churches of Cedar Rapids provide the funds that would allow the Gideons to place a copy of God's Word in every hotel room, in every hotel in the city. The free will offering from God's people in local churches has always been a mainstay of our ability to take God's Word lost world. From that humble beginning began a worldwide ministry of Gideons and the strong relationship that Gideons have with local churches. You see, every Gideon is a layman, is a member of an evangelical church, and comes with his pastor's recommendation. The result today is that the Gideon ministry is an extension of the church. We share the good news of Christ with men, women, boys, and girls, and we do it in places where you've never been. We do it in a language that you can't speak, and we do it in a place that you've never visited. We distribute God's Word in 200 countries and more than 90 languages. Last year, more than 92 million copies of God's Word were distributed by the Gideons we do this in the highways and byways of life, in hotels that you saw in the video above, hospitals, schools, doctors and lawyers' offices, colleges, prisons, military, fire and police. And just a couple of weeks ago, we gave out almost 600 testaments at the Goshen Fair. And we do this all, one Bible at a time. Gideons visit churches regularly. In fact, it's our desire to visit annually so that we can share what God is doing in the ministry right here in Chester County as well as around the world. You see, we do this for three reasons. We seek your prayers just as we pray for you. We meet weekly in prayer. We pray for our pastors in our given territory as well as the churches and the congregations. And we ask for your prayers as well. Especially, let me add that some of the normal distribution channels are beginning to close. Some of the hotels are saying no. Please pray that those doors stay open. Second, we're in hopes that God will call some to be Gideons, along with their wives. The wives of Gideons serve alongside the Gideons. We serve together in the ministry, each with specific and separate responsibilities. I invite any of you who are here that might want to hear a little bit more about the ministry, See me or one of the Gideons after the service. Finally, we encourage you to support the ministry financially. There's an envelope in that bulletin insert that each of you have. You can place something in that uh, envelope, place it in the offering today, or you can take it home with you and mail it when God provides. Additionally, we have Gideon Bible cards for your use at no cost. This allows for you to send a message uh, in memory on your special day, or one praying for you. Simply uh, complete the card indicating the number of Bibles that you're dedicating to the occasion, 
or and write a personal message if you'd like. Then mail it to the individual you're recognizing. Then in the accounting envelope, simply place a check in there and mail it to, to the self mailer on the front. We have packets of these available for anybody who might like to pick them up uh, out of the gathering area. Or you can see any of the Gideons of Calvary, uh, Chuck Evans, Chuck Baker, Tim Bossert, or myself. Uh, we're delighted that uh, Phil and uh, Akiko Ellsworth are joining with us today to assist and answer any questions as well. David Graham was born in a small town in central Ohio. His home life was normal. His father was the police chief, and that home life was normal until his father, the chief, was arrested and sent to jail for the robbery. You can imagine the impact that had on David. He turned to girls, and then alcohol, and then drugs. And when I heard David tell this story, it would slowly tap his heart to show the aching of this area. But to the world, he'd say, I'm OK. David moved from Ohio to California and then to Texas. By the time he got to Texas, it took more than $500 a day to satisfy his habit. Home was an underpass where the highway was passed. Still, the aching continued, but I'm OK. You can imagine where the funding came from. Not surprisingly, he was arrested and he was sent to jail. He was such a disturbed young man that he didn't fit in there either, and he was thrown in solitary. In solitary, the food is slid through a small opening in the door. That first night, David took that food and he threw that against the door. It was removed, and in its place was a torn, tattered, soiled Gideon Bible. David took that Bible and he threw that against the door as well, but it remained. Finally, out of desperation, David picked up that Bible and he began to read. And he too learned that God had sent his son so that David could be forgiven of all of his sins and he could be washed clean and he could have eternal life. David gave his heart to the Lord and he soon developed an insatiable appetite to learn more about his newfound friend Jesus. When David was returned, he was released from prison. He was a changed man. He shared his faith with his mother and his father his mother accepted Christ, but his father resisted. But when David shared, he indicated that he now has a ministry in his hometown that helps those with the problems that he had. But he also shared that his father had recently passed away, and that because of David's persistence and God's faithfulness, that his father, too, came to know Christ. David shared his testimony his father's funeral, and several other family members came to know the Lord as well. All this happened because a person somewhere in a church at a session like this donated five dollars to the Gideon ministry. And then a Gideon was faithful to take that five dollars and to convert it to a Bible and to place it in a hotel where more than 2,000 people came in contact with it over a seven-year period. And then another Gideon was faithful to replace that Bible because it was soil, and to take it to the prison and to give it to the chaplain there who placed it faithfully in David Graham's solitary confinement cell. Wouldn't you have been blessed to have been the one who purchased that Bible? Wouldn't you have been honored to, the one, to be the one who placed that Bible in the hotel, or replaced it and took it to the prison and gave it to the chapel? God gives us these opportunities all the time. You'll also see that God's plan for his work is not necessarily our plan. Both of the testimonies that I've shared with you today resulted as a Bible that was passed from one to another the first one was a hotel Bible that saved someone in prison. And then we had a, a torn page torn from the Testament that saved someone who was also in prison playing cards. You see, God's word 
does not return void. It accomplishes that for which God sent it. Note that it is God that sent it and not man. I want to thank Pastor Crewson for this opportunity of sharing the Gideon ministry with Calvary today. And I want to thank each one of you as well for your participation in the Gideon ministry in whatever way God leads you. 